Hello, driver. Collect several freight vans along the Falmouth branch line and bring them up to Truro. Begin with the five conflats at Falmouth Exchange 1 and then pick up the brake at Goods Dock 2. Let me zoom that map in a little bit. That's slightly far out. OK, let's have a look at our instructions. So we're stopping in there. Where are we at the moment? We're in here. So we need to change some junctions. We need to get to that one there, which means that one and that one. Right, I do believe. Oh, it's the squeaky squealy loco, Joy. Red light there, but it's not on the HUD. Flatten those buffers. Oh, that screeching is going to uh, mess my head about. Right, so that's along this line. So we need to come out that way and cross over. There we go. train is missing. Approach 3, which is where we'll need to do a change direction again. Sorry, yes, this scenario is called Picking Up the Vans, uh, DWR Pannier, and it's by Todd Burke. Got a green light for our reversing manoeuvre. Right, where are we going now? Got to pick up one, two, three, four, five wagons there and then come back to approach zero out here. So to do that we need to change a couple of points and that should get us in the right direction. Yep, if we finished we have. Hey BRP4472, thank you for the follow, much appreciated. So 
so Falmouth Exchange 1, we have some wagons. We also have a downhill run here, so I'm just going to uh, put a bit of brake on. Start slowing the loco down. Otherwise we're going to uh, shove these wagons off the track. I suddenly wonder whether I was going to stop. <laughs> That's a very sharp hill. 1 in 38 on this bit. Just trying to get to the point where the brakes will let go enough for us to start moving. Bournemouth Approach Zero is in front of us. Right. Yeah, sorry about the squeak, folks. There's nothing I can do about that. So going out to Falmouth Approach Zero now. Get the WD-40 out. Yeah, I think that's the solution, Boston. How about lowering the sound? I can lower the sound. There you go. I've cut the sound right down. Don't break. <laughs> no shunting scenario without breaking. <laughs> Now we've got all the brakes on the wagons, because of course these are all um, fitted by the looks of it, although they've got grey boxes on them, I think they're fitted uh, wagons. So now we're stopping very quickly. Oh no, we're going on a 1 in 80 gradient uphill, no wonder. Fringe, this Friday FSX exclusive stream. Um, I think I'm going to try that out and see what people tell me. As with all things, and if people don't like what I'm doing, I need them to sell me. If they do like what I'm doing, then that'd be nice if you told me that as well. Right, couple the brake van here. So that's that one. Uh, that one. 
and that one. We get our guest to the middle siding for the brake van. Will there be a voice chat we can hear? Yes, I've, I've got TeamSpeak working now, so I should be able to join the TeamSpeak. So we're coming to get our brake van and then I guess we're going to start our journey up the hill. So we've got permission to pass this signal danger. Lots of signals at danger in this area. Boston, how long have I been on the Nuthouse streamers list? Um, probably about a month. Victor, why am I ignoring you? I wasn't aware I was. What have I missed? Sorry, Victor. Oh, there'll be a crane that can load SGRS crane, uh, crane wagon containers. Um, I don't know. I don't, wasn't aware there was an issue, to be honest. Good night, Ninja Joker. Get this brake van. Right, we have the brake van. Now we're going up to Penmere. Do brake vans have anything to do with brakes? They certainly do. So in larger trains, uh, or any train, it provides braking power at the rear of the train, rather than all the braking required to be done by the loco. So there'd be a man in the, uh, in the back of the train here who watches the train, keeps an eye out for any problems on the wagons, and uh, will also um, apply extra braking to the train if it's needed.
What makes rail driver shake? Um, there's a big subwoofer bit speaker in the bottom of it, so you hook it through your sound system, and it's basically just playing the sound because it only plays the subwoofers. It makes it vibrate. It's quite effective. Bridges, trees, everyone's just getting in my way. Telegraph poles. <laughs> There's too much scenery on this route. Get rid of all the scenery. Uh, Joseph Falls, yes. Plug the rail driver into your um, computer where you'd normally plug your headphones and plug your headphones into the back of the rail driver. Or if you're using USB headphones then it doesn't matter. Actually, if you're using USB headphones it's actually a bit more tricky. I'm not sure what you're doing in that situation. Cheers, friend Stalin. Thanks for joining this evening. So we're stopping at the Penmere Avoider, which is just up here. coming into the avoider and then we're going to stop. What's next? We're dropping the brake van off in the shed. Line two. Let me change that one. Yep, okay, let's go and drop the brake van off. Leave the brake van in shed three, pick up two white standard vans, get the brake van and carry on. Going into shed three, going downhill, just need to watch our speed here. Apologies if I'm missing chat, I can't see it while I'm looking left like this. Rogers making a scenario on the Weird Al route called the Early Bird using a 3F passenger service. Oh, that sounds good. 
Hey, Beast Builder. Thanks, Bo. Thanks for sp stopping in for as long as you could. Alright, once the brake van is in the siding in the shed, we can uh, drop it off. Oh, Robert, uh, Bob is doing one as well. Excellent. Some uh, some weird L scenarios. I'm a fan of that idea. Right. Someone remind me. I've got the brake van on the, the brake on that. All right. So now we're going to pin me a shed one to get the two whites. Uh, so we need to come past the signal. Victor's making a train spotting scenario passing. Excellent. That sounds good, Joe. Uh, Ed, are you really eating it? this signal. Then we're clear of the point. <coughs> right, let's change that and we're coming into shed one. What's the blue line, Joe? That's me going backwards. Basically, it changes colour. It's got three colours for forwards and three colours for backwards. The colours indicate speed, but there's two, three different. There's two different sets: one for forward speeds, one set for backward speeds. Chris has workshop scenarios. For Western lines come in. Awesome. Right, now we're going back for our loco. Again, we've got to go past this signal. Hey White Mead, welcome. That's it, now we can change the point and go back for our brake van. See Rogers, there's some really great routes, but the only routes you'd like to see in 2015. The short answer is yes. The long answer is I can't really say what I'd like to see because I, I'm involved in some of the decisions. So um, it'd be uh, inappropriate for me to say, I think. But yes, there are definitely some routes I'd still like to see from all over the world.
<laughs> don't want any Dutch ones, though. <laughs> Thank you, learning developer. and release the handbrake. Good, we're ready to go. Raptor Penryn is our next station. I do like the chuffing sounds on this loco. Two miles to Penryn North. What are we doing after that? Drop off the brake van, couple, and then get some wagons. Up to Perrinwell, drop off, get a wagon, get a couple up. Truro Goods, drop everything off and go to the engine shed for a nice cup of tea. Building the boiler pressure back up. That's it, we're accelerating again now. Alright, Ravosphere, thanks for joining. And Odrin, thank you for joining. limit coming up soon then we're hitting uh, Penryn North approach
Right. I'm going to go all the way up to Penryn North Approach, which is a little bit further up here. Uh, Bob, yes, I am going to upload a new flight plan once I've done it. So, t uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, I think. But yes, I'm definitely going to get a new flight plan uploaded to cover off the second part. Stop here so we can reverse back in. And we're going to cattle two, which is that one. Lebminer, where's the flight plan? If you go on to the Steam group, I've posted a, new, a topic in the Steam discussion forum with all the links, including the link to my Dropbox and where the flight plans are kept. Alright, let's go and drop the brake van off as instructed. Dropping the brake van off here so we can get our um, two wagons. And then we've got to go to Cattle One, so pull forward. Change that point, and we can go and get these two wagons at the front of the siding. Come on, I'm up for a shunting puzzle. Go for it. I am up for a shunting puzzle. Moggy's going to join us in the next flight. Excellent. <coughs> Let's 
That's what I like to hear. Oh yes, open rails. I'm familiar with that, see Rogers. Alright, we're gonna get these couple of couple cattle wagons. And then move off. So we move out and then we come back and get ours. I just tabbed for that ground frame. Yes, the Baron 58 is very easy to fly, Moggy. And it's, a, it's, it's nippier as well, without being too difficult to fly. Change the point, go back and get the guards fan. That's a fabulous whistle, isn't it? On the flight sim, have you got any big planes? I mean, do I, do I own any? I've just got all the planes that come with it, plus some of the light aviation ones on Steam. If you mean um, planes that you'd like to see in the game, then I'm definitely the wrong person to put requests into for that. Let's get this guards van. <coughs> Do the handbrake. Paramol up platform, here we go. Oops. Uh, Dean, the problem with Newcastle to Amsterdam is I don't fly the um, jumbo jets, or any jets for that matter, so uh, that would be a long boring flight over mostly sea. pressure to come back up a bit. We're on a hill and I wasn't planned for it. <clears throat> come on Mr. Boiler Pressure, come back up a bit.
Oh, keeping you up, darkness. Considering how old this route is, it doesn't do bad, does it? Right, we're nearly up this hill. See Rogers, how do you get the boiler pressure to stay a decent pressure without going too low? It's mostly a balancing game with the regulator um, and the gut off and also making sure you keep the fire mass at the right level. You need to find ideally what the ideal fire mass is for the loco and then keep it at that. So it seems to be doing alright about 74% actually on this loco. So that gives you the most, if you like, positive effect on the boiler pressure. Um, and then your cut off and your regulator will control how much you're consuming it. I've also got the blower and the damper switched on. The blower shouldn't do much at this speed, but the damper certainly will. <coughs> cut off is indeed reversible, but it's called a cut off on a steam engine. Two point four miles to Perimwell. Is it Perimwell and then we're off to Truro? Yep. So this is the last branch line station before we get to the top. Hey Van Liru.
Might as well take the opportunity to get watered and uh, cold. <clears throat> oh, a nice one, lonely developer. I look forward to seeing that scenario on Bully Wittenberg. Coming up to Paramwell now, where we'll do the last shunt. Chocolate orange smoothie? Oh, that's Terry's ball. <laughs> So we're stopping at Perrinwell up platform, so I've got a little bit to go yet. Dean, where you can get eight big planes from? Well, the Flight Sim X comes with some some jumbos, uh, some ju some jet passenger liners, um, but I think sites like AV Sim, um, FlightSim.com, you can probably get some stuff from there that you're looking for, possibly. Careful, Moggy. You make me too jealous, I'll have to get the CH Quadrant out and show you ha how good it works. <laughs> Alright. So, now we are here, in the right platform, we have to go back to Paramol 1, which is that one, to drop off the brake fan. Yes, just flight as well, yeah. Park the brake at Paramore 1, pick up the single plank van at the end of the cattle siding, put the brake van back on the end of the train, and we're off to Truro. How do you go about making a route set in the old days? Talking buildings not there anymore, builds that are here but not in the time set sort of thing. Um, old photos, measurements, exactly exactly what um, Darkness Monster said, you just have to kind of make it up. But make it up based on everything that you can find and just fill in the gaps with your imagination. There's a lot of research actually, a lot of um, books and things covering all sorts of lines. Um, out there and what you can almost also do is where there are gaps it may well be that those gaps have got a standard way of being done so I don't know what happens in this junction well it's normally done like this so we'll do it like that it's it's that kind of thing and it's about figuring that out so it's more than just researching this individual route it's about understanding how things like this route were done oops that one break one on all right, it's cattle siding time. So we're going to get that one, I think.
Uh, Frisco, yes. What happens is if you open the regulator, you actually create a bit of a draft over the fire, which can uh, will improve the uh, the uh, steaming capability. So you actually raise the temperature of the firebed if you open the regulator a bit, which is why that happens. So if you're trying to build up steam, put the brakes on and um, open the regulator a crack, uh, and you'll find that um, you can actually build some steam up that way. There. Pick these up. Pick up this wagon. I've just got the one to pick up, I think. Yep, just the one. Now we go back and get brake van. C Rogers, when you press C, what do they just do on a steam loco? The cylinders. So they're called a cylinder cox or cylinder drains. So essentially what happens is that it's difficult to see because it's all internal on this one, but um, the steam gets put into uh, from the boiler goes into the cylinders, steam chest the cylinders. It's then used and then expelled out of the um, chimney. It's when you get the chuff. Um, but if you don't if you don't do anything with the cylinders for a little while, the steam you get steam steam hanging around, and it condenses and forms water, and water doesn't compress like steam does. Um, and what happens is that if you didn't have a way of draining that water out of the cylinder cocks, when the when the pistons moved and tried to compress the water and failed, it would just blow off the front of the um, cylinder cocks because the water's got to go somewhere. Uh, sorry, the front of the cylinders. Um, so what happens is that um, the way that steam drivers would do it is if any of them take the power off for any amount of time or if they stop, they'll open the cylinders, uh, the drains, so that um, when they next start uh, moving, the steam um, forces any water out of the um, cylinders um, and thereby avoids that problem. Pick up the guards van. Is there a way of stopping the holding the schedule from recalculating? No, not that I'm aware of.
Uh, Froney, the 145 was a twin pack with uh, Mannheim Karlsruhe. Uh, Kamali, what I showed you previously was a thing called the show driver list. Um, if you look at, I think, the advanced scenario tutorial or the more scenario, the most recent one, I think it was, um, where I did lots of bits and pieces. What I showed in there was, um, yeah, how to enable the show driver list screen. You could untick everything in show driver list. That probably may, it would still recalculate it, but it would have nothing to recalculate. Right, we're on our way to Truro. Uh, no, Kamali, what I'm talking about is a thing called show driver list. So it's an extra command line parameter which enables a uh, hidden option. And um, by enabling show driver list you get the ability then to switch off and on services from whether they are part of the recalculation. No, then there isn't a way of actually stopping the uh, dispatcher from calculating. Yes, that's correct, Kamali. Back the but the old button back from the old days. One in fifty nine gradient now. Struggling a bit up this. Tunnel.
Right, time to get some water and coal in now we're out of that tunnel. That's right, Coaster fan, we're into the Amer big American diesel after this. One point eight miles to Truro, good reception. He's up, we've got a 30 limit coming up. Uh, Coaster fan, this scenario hasn't got much longer left now. We've got to uh, stop at good reception, drop a reverse up and drop into Chura S1 and then move to... So we've got two or three moves left and then we're done. Favorite part about the upcoming shark nose? I like the length, uh, the nose on it. I just think it's uh, it's an unusual loco. Right, got the uh, the lower signal. And it looks like we're clear all the way through this little bit here. Little bit of speeding going on there, but never mind. Hello. Clearly, we haven't got the right path. Good reception. It's that one and that one. Right. Now we have good reception showing up. Got the ground frame signal, so we're clear into the yard. Frony, make sure you add them to the Steam group, and then I can find them.
Right, stopping at Good's reception. Coast to fan, uh, probably in about the next five or ten minutes. Just finishing this scenario now. Dropping everything off, so you change the slip, and again, nope, no, that's it, and that one. Right, that drops us back into West One once the timing's done. Yeah, thanks for that, Kamali. I went through and got caught up with everything in the um, in the thread. So there's uh, there's a big stack in the backlog to do now. Thank you for that. Dropping everything off now in true arrest one. I was hoping there might be one on the other end of the loop, uh, the other end, but there isn't. Great dog, I'm just using FXAA. Basically everything up right up until you get to SSAA. I switched off the SSAA. Um, mostly to see what people would say, because I get double the frame rate without SSAA. I mean, the frame rate with it isn't bad, but uh, I thought I'd try it without because the frame rate is really, really nice now. Cheers, Joe. Thanks for joining. Oh, nice. Thanks, Bushes. Dropping these wagons in the siding. And it says to uncouple everything here. And then go to Shed 1. Where is Shed 1? It's there. I just have to get past the uh, three-way junction.
Of course, now we've got no brakes. <laughs> Alright, let's set our point. That's where we want to go. Engine shed one. Everyone enjoyed the uh, the squeaky. Hey, thank you for driving. Right, so that scenario, as I said, was uh, picking up the vans, GWR Pannier, uh, by Todd Burke on um, Steam Workshop. Right, um, and uh, Samsungo Gaming, or Samsungo, sorry. Thank you for the follow, and uh, when it comes up. Come on, you can do it any time now. Grizzly Gaming, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Right, let me go ahead and grab the map for that one. 